Hi again, Armageddon Now by Dwight Wilson. We're concluding the, the chapter eight, which is entitled From Sinful Alliance to Christian Realism. This has to do with the speculation about the rise of the UN. He's already dealt with NATO and where it stands in the pr prophetic scheme of things. And Amer where does America stand? And he continues here. To the premillenarian mind, the formation of the United Nations was also a foreboding evil. It presaged the revival of the Roman Empire, which was to be led by the Antichrist. This tone had been set by Harry Rimmer as early as 1940, when he predicted that a new League of Nations would appear after the war, along with a universal dictator. The very term United Nations sounded ominous to the Evangel magazine and the organization's ability to wield power partly was questioned. Wilbur M. Smith, in two timely articles, How Antichrist Will Rule and The Shaping of One World, saw international affairs leading to the dictatorship of Revelation 13. This skepticism toward anything associated with the United Nations resulted in a preference among premillenarians for unilateral action vis-a-vis -vis Russia or Israel. There was great fear of submitting to the sovereignty of the United States. There, read that again. There was great fear of submitting the sovereignty of the United States to the domain of the Antichrist. The Far East continued to be assigned roles in prophetic schemes too. Asiatic nations were usually included among the kings of the East, in Revelation 16 verse 12, or the many people with the accompanying the Northern Confederacy in Ezekiel 38, verse 6. Japan was given priority in the early 1940s. Quote, Scriptures clearly indicated that great oriental armies will invade Palestine from the east, and the entity of Japan, or rather the entry of Japan into the war, seems to be a step in that direction. Unquote. But Japan's star quickly dimmed. After the war, Our Hope magazine suggested China and India as likely candidates, because communism was making rapid strides there. The advent of the Cold War shifted attention to Eastern Europe, and the Russian satellites, as well as the Far East, were included among the many people with the, of, of the Ezekiel 38.6 reference. Louis T. Talbot, in The King's Business, gave a different twist than others. In his system, Japan, China, and India would be opposed to the Russian Confederation. With the fall of China to the Communists, attention tended to center upon that nation as the, the, the dominant figure in the Far East. It is possible, one quote said, that the sweeping victories of the Communist army in China indicate the groundwork for the federation of these northern and eastern nations is being laid, unquote. In a message at the 1949 Founders' West, sorry, Founders Week conference at Moody Bible Institute, Wilbur M. Smith drew attention in an article on Gog and Magog by Walter Scott in the June. I'll read that again. Wilter, Wilbur M. Smith drew attention to an article on Gog and Magog by Walter Scott in the June 1888 issue of the Prophetic News and Israel's Watch. That article had said, quote, Russia has for ages meditated on the conquest of Asia and India and China. Great Britain with the United States stands face to face with this Russian power and these two sides will come into one final awful struggle. We judge that the tide of Russian conquest will flow on to the frontiers of China. We believe from the place assigned to Russia in the word of God that her legions will sweep over the plains and mountains of Asia and become the dominant power over all the East until she falls forever on the mountains of Judea. All, all this, of course, based on Ezekiel 38 and 39. Wilson's concluding paragraph in chapter 8 says, The point Smith made was that only the inspired word of God could have enabled Scott to make such an accurate prediction. Smith did not suggest what spirit inspired another writer he quoted to identify in 1844 the kings of the East as the officers of the East India Company. 
The next chapter is this, The Certainty of Survival. I'll put in a link to a series of videos we did that are linked together at the end on Jehovah's Witnesses and the peace and security prophecies, which of course attach to many of these same speculations about Revelation, Ezekiel, but especially 1 Thessalonians. So that series, I'll put the first of those videos up for you, and you'll see the links at the end of each. Uh, also, there's a peace and security playlist, which is dominated by those videos. So if you have trouble navigating the particular videos, go to the peace and security playlist on your screen. See you next time.